Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. It is obvious. You know that a small habit like cigarette smoking among a small nation can be removed permanently only by a powerful ruler with great effort. The doctors declare endless harms of cigarette smoking. Experts announce about this. A lot of TV programs, videos were made on this issue. Articles were written about this problem, but no, most of people cannot quit this habit. Approximately 1 billion people are still cigarette addicted in the world. I'm talking about just the simple habit of cigarette smoking. So we understand that it is hard to break even a habit. It is difficult to quit addictions. But there was a man who removed numerous ingrained habits from intractable, fanatical large nations with slight outward power and little effort in a short period of time. And in their place, he so established exalted qualities that they became as firm as if they had mingled with their very blood. Peace be upon him. His name is Muhammad. It was 1400 years ago. There were incredible habits among Arabian society in Mecca. You know, you can never see such a savage people. They used to bury their daughters alive. Can you believe this? And this was a big habit and they used to proud of this. And they also used to be sex addict or alcohol dependent, you know, they were drunk all the time. Or they used to be hardly racist. Interest was general thing. There was no value of women. For example, if someone dies, his wife was used to captured by the first pretender. Could you believe this? And it goes like this. I mean, there were incredible habits and the tribes of Arabian people, the tribes of Arabian society were the most savage people at that time. And then Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came. He was illiterate. You know, he didn't know how to read or write. He had not graduated any psychology school. He had not studied any sociology department of any university, you know. And he also had not read any philosophy book. But he started to talk about something, you know, something dangerous. He started to bring new message to people, but these messages were really dangerous for him. And he didn't have any power though. But interesting thing is, some people gradually started to be impressed, started to follow him. And if you started to follow him at that times, it means you actually had accepted the incredible persecutions of Meccans. Isn't it interesting? I mean, why? He didn't promise you any worldly attractive thing. He didn't promise you any money or something like that. On contrary, you will get serious problems with Meccans. So why do you accept this horrible state? And they started to change, you know, they started to change their lifestyles. They listened to him, whatever he told, and they started to quit their evil addictions. For example, Umar ibn al-Khattab, he was an alcohol addict before, yes. But after coming in contact with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he became such a man who is considered as a justice symbol for all humanity. Guys, psychologists, doctors did not work on this guy, just an illiterate man. How? How can it be? Yes, because there is a divine inspiration here. This effect cannot be made by a human being. It is not possible. And not only a man, but also huge societies were changed incredibly by just a man. By the way, he brought new rules which are not attractive for desires of human beings. For example, he brought the fasting, five daily prayers, or alms jiving, or not to drink alcohol. These things are not attractive for our desires, right? But the alcohols had flowed in streets of Medina after the words about alcohol was revealed. Why? What happened? The modern specialists cannot do this even though they explain the harms of alcohol, can they? And after Islam, 80% of these people left Arabia and went all around the world to teach people. And they were thousands, you know. You cannot see such a fast growth. And all Ashab, all the companions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, have become role models for the Muslims for 1400 years. But these guys were extremely savage before Muhammad, peace be upon him. Nobody can explain this without prophethood. No, it is not possible. There is no such a revolution in history. But if you still deny the prophethood of Muhammad, peace be upon him, Billy Zaman has a challenge for you. He says, we present the Arabian Peninsula as a challenge to those who refuse to see the testimony of the blessed age of the Prophet. 
Let them each take a hundred philosophers, go there and strive for a hundred years. Would they be able to carry out in the time one hundred of what he achieved in a year? Sciences have reached high levels, right? We have science of psychology, science of sociology, we have specialists, right? Okay then, take a specialist group of sociology and take a specialist group of psychology and philosophers and go to Arabia and work on for a hundred years and try to make some changes, you know? For example, bring a new religion, new rules and make people to confirm to you through your modern books. Would they be able to do this? Obviously not possible. The modern Tao still cannot solve the racism issue in this modern world, you know? He solved this in the most savage people 1400 years ago. He just said, a white has no superiority over a black, nor a black has any superiority over a white. That's it. There is no racism issue in Muslims for 1400 years. You know what? Forget about the racism. We are not able to change even our child's about simple habits, right? Such as not to play video games, to study, to do homeworks, right? It, it is a reality. So simply, it is impossible to make these changes. All these changes can only arise from a prophet. It is obvious. Yeah, la, 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 la